Scotch for Woo! dummies. Hey guys, happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday. Good Boys. evening, everybody. Cheers. 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 Oh, I can do a cheers. Man. Happy Thursday, boys. All right. And to you. Cheers, guys. To you, to land. you, to you, to you. Welcome to Scotch for Dummies mm. Thursday night live. We are having a good time here. Heck yeah. Um, talking a little bit about I some new uh, craft whiskey. And we actually are trying some craft whiskey oh, tonight. It's kind of nice. Are. Yeah, we got quite an agenda, and we're breaking into the topic, right? You know, pre-show, I guess. So we'll see where. Kind of excited goes. about this we're topic. About a few things, it's good. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. So should we start with seeing who's on tonight? John? I almost want to say if we should start with a small wee prayer to make sure we don't have the video problems. We live stream last gods, week. please, please be with us gods. tonight. Yeah. It looks a lot better. Let's yeah. say hi. Let's say hi to uh, Mark and Shauna, shall we? Well, hello there. Who, who well, put us that. together? That well, seems like a horrible idea. I don't know. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. Look at those guys. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. well, Hey, what are we talking about? <laughs> all right. So, why did, oh, Drew's already pushing it to its limits. I am to see if we testing it. I'm like, just go for it. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. let's say hello to the early people. Uh, I know Tom, uh, Tom R was on earlier. He was first. And then Bob H. But we don't see him for some reason. So we lose him. Must be so now they're over an hour. They get kicked out, huh? They're out. So it looks uh -oh. like Jeff. Jeff Sly is first. Yeah, and so he he's, says he's into some ASM. Yeah, are we? Uh, not, not the... We're just going to use the uh, the abbreviation. <laughs> 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 well, that's I, that's the way to go. I think. No, it's oh, not yeah, ASMR. Like it. That's right. Just ASM. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's also fine, I guess. Trooper Henry, good to see you. Got some Chattanooga cast strength. Oh, he's back proof. offshore sobering up now, drying out the liver. <laughs> good for him. 40, 50 miles Steven out. Steven Rogers, good to Hi, see Steven. you. Good Bobby choice. J, always good to see you, my friend. Bobby J, Sean. Well, guess, uh, guess what? Sean, we'll do, cheers. Guess what aisle Bobby's in later? Yeah, we'll do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That's my favorite It's part. always part of the after show. I'm guessing 23, show. but we'll see. Well, not you can't tell them ahead of time. He's going to go there. Like, well, yeah. see? I see. That's what I'm saying. It's uh, like a little insider scoop. put it in also. Mount Megan. What else we got here, guys? Francois. Martin is in. Martin. Hey, Martin. We just saw him. Justin Pack. You know, oh, Pack. dry January is for the birds. That is for the truth. <laughs> yeah. that. So, Gregor, time for a dram. Saw some pictures of him floating around with uh, with some whiskey folk, with Aquavite and, and Roy. So what, what's going on with All you, right, buddy? I'm curious. George K. And George. Bobby H. And we got Eric, Eric? Wade as well. Michael, John, hey, Eric, Everwind, stuff for work. You give too many people. Look, DB, she. This is good. Eric. This is great. Oh my gosh, got, that's a great group. Everybody's talking. That's good. What we got here? What we got here? What's this say? Looking awesome, Bailey. That's right. <laughs> Peter Newton. Thought. What's Peter? he He's saying, Chat Town, my hometown. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Mark Rayner's on as well. All right. Oh, nice. Always good to see Mark. It is good to see Mark. Well. We are here, guys. Uh, interesting topic tonight. So, you know, each week we go around, we start kind of throwing some ideas to ground for ideas and, and for topics. And this week, Andrew came up with this one. And this one is something that you kind of are excited about. Yeah. So craft craft brewing is an exceedingly expanding category in the, the U.S. market specifically. I didn't I tried to look for brewing or distilling. I meant distilling. I was going to say, I thought you were going to start. <laughs> he wants to brew. So, uh, because we just went through a huge boom over the last 10 years. Well, we did. Craft brewing. Craft brewing, right? yeah. So I thought that's maybe when we were starting the conversation. No, but, so yeah. craft distilling. And, you know, when you look at data and you, I, I was unable to find really any data on craft distilling outside of the U.S. 
because that probably isn't as famous or as popular. Now, there's a lot of distilleries opening in well, Ireland. Ireland's but popping. But I, it was I would say that it's more like it's not a trend because they've been doing it forever, right? So, like, if you think about, like, I don't know about it, Irish whiskeys. There's only, like, two distilleries. But I'm thinking more, like, family-run, small-time, like, uh, in Germany, if you're doing, like, like fruit brandies or, you know what I mean? Sure. So, I think there's a lot of craft right. distilling that goes on. A lot of, like, I mean, that's where it started, right? Like, little farm distilleries and things like that to, you know, transport the whiskey instead of the grain. So, I, I think that there's probably a fair amount of that. But like in Ireland, it got there was a boom and then a bust and then all the distilleries went away. So I think that there's areas where it's, you know, the interesting thing about out. that is when I and Dr. Scott to be in a little while I'll talk about oh, wow. more nice. more, more cool. um, details about craft distilling. The limits for craft distilling are actually pretty big, so you can be a pretty big distiller and still be considered craft distiller oh so the definition definition yeah. is a little a little bit um wider than it could be i mean many many of the whiskey uh, arguably many of the mainline distilleries in scotland could be considered craft distillers when we talk about craft distillery uh, distilling i think it would be interesting and there will be a correlation that we could we'll probably follow that will follow the, the brewing i mean yeah. let's back up 20 years ago you all right 25 years ago and think about the beers that were available in you know your grocery store or liquor store yep. what were they you know they were the big budweiser big dogs. coors light coors miller yeah. Yeah. you know schlitz uh, yeah. <laughs> pbr <laughs> but, you know but then all of a sudden this craft <laughs> brewing thing happens and i mean you can go into kroger here in town and, and there's a whole aisle of beers you've never even heard of uh, so is that what's going to happen in in the whiskey industry when we get into maybe craft distilling i would say there's a lot of correlation between the two because you know for craft breweries you can be a really big brewer and still technically be a craft correct unless you're not like budweiser right. or Miller, yeah like i mean any of those like large large scale ones are obviously not but yeah i mean i would think like even something as big as like a sam adams or you know, some of those like larger, not big. just regional yeah. Yeah. beers are probably still Yingli considered. Craft. Yingling would be considered yep. probably a craft. Yeah. Cause yep. it's a regional, regional beer. Yeah. See the, the, so if you ever, if you talk to most brewers for distilleries, so you, so when you make, when you distill a product, you have to brew a beer first. Right. And then you distill it. Most of those would say a craft brewery has a much better handle of raw ingredients than a craft distiller. Interesting. Because when you brew beer for craft beer, that means that you, you are drinking the raw product. So, so the flavor needs to be there right there and there's no off flavors available. But when you're brewing for craft distillery, you kind of want to minimize the amount of flavor that's in the beer because you you're relying on the barrel you're relying on cutting there's a lot of things that you just lose in the distilling process that would be in a craft beer so some would argue that craft brewing from a beer perspective is more difficult craft distilling that's a whole different level you need the copper stills you need there's a lot of equipment and energy that you need to do that distilling process a lot of waste because you brew this huge pot of beer you get this much distill out of it right so so there's a there's a fine line there trying to get all that together and it's just a, it's a different skill so what you may see is a lot of craft distilleries working with craft brewers to you know craft brewers can I need your produce. Your, that. I need, I need your base beer. I don't need your fancy hoppy beer. I need your base beer. And then I'll take that and put it in my still. And then I don't have to buy all the brewing equipment. Right. I just have to buy the still. And then we can work together. On well, let's back up for a second. Cause I feel like we're getting ahead. In yeah, the details. The cartoon, because, sure. the so let's, here, let's come back to what, like the definition of craft distilling. What, what is that to me? You know, I always hear this about breweries and everything else. I always think of like, Ooh, it's fancy. It's always really cool. It's it's uniqueness. They're going crazy. They're it's doing fancy. some fancy fruity beer, like I a cereal <laughs> beer. I had, I had a Lucky Charms beer once. I was like, that to me is like a that, that's a craft, you know? Right? But what is it like to you? What what is craft distilling? So craft distilling is some something. Well, there's a definition, and I could go get Dr. Scotch, and we could get into that. Um, but it's essentially it's a it's, it's a it's a, it's a smaller ready. it's a smaller distillery. I mean, it's 
smaller is a relative term because those terms get really big really fast. But it, it's somebody that um, typically the craft distillery has to be greater than 51% involved with the downstream production. So that's where they like bottle it and all that kind of stuff. So it's a, you know, like MGP technically could be considered a craft because they do a, a lot of volume. They do a ton. But they do a bunch of different, unique everything, mash bills and barrelings and all those kind of things. But because they don't put their name on anything, they're not a craft distiller. You got to put your name on it and be involved from the distillery through the bottling into the okay. final barrel. So is it safe okay. to say craft okay. distilling or distillers or distillery is a small entity usually? Generally, yes. Stuff for works no, knows where your uh, lucky charm beer. Oh comes yeah, from. close to his house. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw a comment too about the guitar pick. The guitar pick is not lasting, gentlemen. It's it's on its last pick, if you will, because uh, oh. we do have a special. Um, custom made, custom made uh, graphic going back there it's gonna be pretty awesome so i know you guys awesome. may or may not like to pick it's something cool for me but uh yes. we are moving on but and yes can, yeah I'm you pick. like it don't you I like pick. I'm the pick of there. destiny yeah. <laughs> okay it's all, it's all good man tenacious d <laughs> you call, you call whatever you want <laughs> tenacious d. that's a craft I'm, for you i'm not, <laughs> I'm not here to argue you. with you so what do you think sean what, what's craft is stealing to you so to me i I feel like it's a it's a level of scale, right? So you've got to have a small enough production in my mind that you have people that are involved through the whole life cycle of that product, right? From mm -hmm. from the from the thought process of what they'd like it to be and the selection of the raw ingredients through the distilling and and barreling and aging of that product. And so I mean so I, I always like to think of like Edra Dower as like, you know, I mean, you just got a few people it's small. in, in that, like four, in that facility, right? <laughs> like now, obviously you can get bigger than that, but to me, it's, it's people that are intimately involved. Whereas like, if you think of like a, from a, from a brewing standpoint, like a Budweiser, like you've got a huge, huge staff and it's more about the consistency and keeping the product the same rather than having any sort of creative license and you know there's there's not as much uh room to play around with it where if you've got a small group of people they can do like interesting stuff and and try new things and experiment with stuff and you've got a, a vision it's more artistic i guess of like you know just trying things and, and seeing what works yeah there's also an expectation of <clears throat> transparency like where do I get my grain? Where do I get my yeast? Where do I get all that kind of stuff? What you know? Am I um, barreling locally? Am I you know shipping it off to somewhere else? So there's a lot of transparency that is generally associated with craft distilling, that you have a better story behind each well, bottle. And I think because of that though, there, I think you can be a, a big distiller and still do craft distilling. I think we, no, we see that. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of the big guys, the big players, still do craft distilling but i think because of the fact that it the transparency usually you're going after um ingredients that are limited you know this farmer can only give me so right. many bushels of right it. and so the big guys are like i'm not messing with I'm that because i need that. you know tons of that stuff yes. and you can Yield. only give me pounds yeah. you know hundreds of pounds or or the quality <laughs> of the you know the sherry casks that you can get or the wine barrels that you can pick up like i can only get 10 of these guys right and then we've got to use this other crap so you know? well i mean have you ever heard of tito's vodka yeah no true. Never. they're a craft distillery sure. no yes they are they're considered craft distillery based on their size and the what they do they are they are craft distillery balconies i would also distillery. consider them well, part see, of the u.s okay. treasury because they're printing money balconies i can that. see i guess i mean i guess i don't know anything about tito's. but tito's <laughs> wasn't for a long time like they were they were a small player until they yeah. weren't right that's, that's true, true. You know, they, they kind of blew up and well and that's the thing so what you know from our channel we consider a craft distillery making whiskey that is a very small portion of craft distilling. Yeah, I you think you got brandies, you got vodkas, you got gins, you got all these other other distillate products that that's true. Go to it. <clears throat> yeah, I like Eric Waite's yeah, I agree. definition I think it's, it's here. There is no legal definition of craft, right. but we generally associate it with non-mass production. I, I to me that feels right, right. Right. The thing, I guess the question I'll ask next is, you know, when when we think about like 
I know we're all super excited about American Single Malt, and it's I feel like it's still very new, and it's going to be huge. I think it's going to be a really big thing for America here. I think it's going to be uh, uh, ramping up quick. It's going to take some time because people got they got to wait for the whiskey to mature, right? Right. But I think what they're doing, and I I, know, I read some good art articles today about how to our point about crafting is they're 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 not trying to make it like scotch, no, but they're trying to mimic the process but using what makes them unique in their area we were talking um, about minnesota earlier right. are you like how do, what's the weather like that? how's that going to affect it or you've got california or you've got texas you got different places and they you know and and when you start thinking about american single malt specifically it's a hundred percent barley and it's like everything is grown there locally it has to be all their products so it's like well that's unique to you right yeah. so when you when you start thinking about that it's like how many craft distilleries are going to make it into the next tito's or the next production if you will of actually yeah. making it to a market otherwise you're going to have them I mean, because look at the flip side of beer right we're talking about beer and craft there's i mean i can't tell you how many craft beer breweries oh are. i mean there's like millions right yes. and everyone has their favorites how do you get out of that little swamp of well, I, craziness. I feel like, you know, the cream rises to the top, right? Like the, the people that are doing it well and are putting out products that people enjoy and then can also ramp that up to scale because that's the other key to that. That's right? tough. Like there's going to be some distillers that do a really great job, but it's just a really limited production because of the way they make it or the, the raw ingredients that they're using or just, you know, they don't want to ramp it up. They're very happy putting out, you know, a thousand barrels a year instead of, you know, 10,000 barrels a year. Is it so, cream cream to rise to the top or is it right place, right, uh, right? Yeah, I think it's all the above because I mean, it's, fireball it's is that. not really cream rising to no. the top, but look at how much they're selling. Yeah, it's, it's sort of TikTok ish too, if you will. <laughs> I mean, what's trending? What's going to be the next saying. viral thing? Viral right? whiskey. Yeah. I mean, it, that is a part of it because I mean, there are some beers that that came out of that craft brewing area that I was like, this is this is horrible. Like, I can't believe people are paying money for that. Yeah, and, I'm paying $4 a, a beer at the grocery yeah, store for know, this. And, and it, it right. goes crazy and people just, you know, they do it because they do it, right? Right. Um, so I, I think that there's part of it. And some of that's a flash in the pan, you know? Yeah. Like, they get popular and then they go out of, out of fashion and then they go away, you know? And, and so there's mm -hmm. always going to be those products. But I think when you're talking about whiskey, you're talking about a long-term product a long-term investment of of time and capital and so i think that the ones that are going to do the best are the ones that have the capital early and the foresight to ramp up production so that when it does hit they've got the stockpile ready to sell because what do you do if if your product is the the next big thing and you're like okay we'll just hang on for six years and you can have some Blame you know? uh, supply chain issues <laughs> so, from COVID. So I think that there's going to be some of that too. It's it's going to have to be a, a distillery that's of a certain size and scale that it's already got product ready to go. Um, yep. So I think that that will help. But the quality is going to be the thing that really, I think, makes, makes it, it go forward. Out. Like, I'll, well, I try a lot of stuff through my job and there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, yeah, it's okay. You know, do I want a bottle? Not, not really. But something eventually rises. Yeah. But you always find something that's unique or different or has a story to tell, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's, maybe it's, they, they get their grain and they, they smoke it mm -hmm. with, you know, hickory smoke or something. And it, it just, it makes it <laughs> uniquely American and, and uniquely different from the other competition. So I think that that's I don't know how you too. feel, but the, the story will sell one bottle to me. But if the whiskey doesn't, no, nope. doesn't speak to me, nope. uh, the stories, uh, that was a great story. It, it, Scroll up a little bit. Eric had yet a further comment that a uh, back a uh, follow up comment that said, you know, right there, you just missed it. Yeah, it, to, to judge, you're absolutely right. I mean, there is this. What's he say? Uh, we have a philosophy of quality over quantity with craft, and that's not necessarily a, mm. a true statement. In other words, it, just because it's craft doesn't mean it's quality. I, well, I that's correct. Say, How good is a distiller? Yeah. It right. could be terrible. It could be a craft distiller that's putting out garbage for one or two years, and then they close down because they well, can't yep. sell it. I appreciate the attempt and and appreciate the effort and what they're trying to do. And I can respect the whiskey, even though I don't really like it. It's not my wheelhouse. I, I, yep. I mean, but it, you're right. Two years, flash in the pan. Yep. Did you say that? Yep. And so interesting comment, but I, I agree with you, Eric. 
And it's going to kind of be like the, you know, when American wines started to go, right? You had a lot of like people that had a little plot of land and they were trying some things and, you breaks. know, they were, they were gunslingers, right? And so they were trying new things because they didn't know any better. And I think it's going to be the same way with craft distilling. You've got single malts and you've got people that are trying out, you know, unique barrelings and just like taking the, the basics of like what, what a scotch distillery does and saying, okay, well, what, what can we do to, you know, kind of jazz this up a little bit because we're Americans and we don't like that traditional stuff. Like, <laughs> yep. you know, like sure, put some sprinkles in it or something. I don't know. Gold flakes. I, make it mint. Gold, Gold flakes. You know? Gold slogger. Um, oh, man. So, oh, so man. I think that there's going to be some of some of that kind of, you know, there'll be a little bit of marketing, a little bit of flash. But also I think you're going to get some people that are just like, you know what, they were, they've been doing it right in Scotland for a long time. And, you know, I'm going to try that and just make subtle tweaks to make it my own. And we'll see how it goes. Yeah. That, and that's, that's the beauty of, I'll call it American ingenuity is I, I've got a still and I've got a mash bill and I'm going to figure out what to do with it. And there are things that are going to make go, go great. And there are things that are going to be really awful. Yep. And, and if you don't have a license, just think do it. The, the thing that sucks though is time. Yeah. Right. Cause takes, you, you, cause that's time. why everybody does gin and vodka because that's a quicker process. Hopefully you can make enough. I mean, you got a two year cycle no matter what that you have to forecast out and say, please be with me. And hopefully this is a good, you know, cause you don't know. And not well, only that, if you've got something experimental that you drop in the barrel, you're not going to know if it worked out for three yeah. or four Well, and, and if this is your first time making whiskey and you put it in a barrel, how do you know it's going to be good? Or not? That your, your new make may be terrible. And then you're two years down the road before the, you know, the barrel can't save it. <laughs> well, you're almost yeah. better off to, to kind of start like I don't know who said it earlier about just having a small distillery in your house or something obviously it's illegal <laughs> but to, to do that and test the things out and figure, figure out, out for for a few years before you go big and bigger production and know what you're getting into because I tell you I mean, what it's the scaling is the hardest part of any manufacturing operation yep. scaling well, up from when you add the time scaling up from your five gallon bottle which your five gallon still you do you do a, a craft brew or you do one of those uh, home brew kits five gallons you then distill it and you get like a liter or two of whiskey you put some of those oak um staves, staves. in it mm -hmm. to, to kind of <clears throat> fake it. fake age it and and then you try it that's not even that's same, one though. thing but then when you go to a bigger still the heat transfer is different the i mean it's just a, there's lots of lots of variables right? cutting, I mean, cutting it is more tricky but yeah. i mean making making a barbecue sauce at scale is yep. it is it the same thing no 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 doesn't make like, sense in any of that menu like it's a manufacturing process exactly like, that's what it comes down to and so you know if, if you could be a great home cook but scaling it up to 10 gallons and then scaling that recipe up to a thousand gallons very different processes like extremely yep. different yeah so i and I, I you know there's a lot of schools that offer education in that stuff now and I think you almost have to work at a distillery for a while to to pick up <laughs> to pick up the skill set. That yeah, you that's need, correct. Right? Like and you need to work at scale. Yeah. So you need to work in a distillery for a while to figure out what they're doing to make that good whiskey at scale. And then correct. And then well, you can use that. Experience. I sent you guys a, a video today. I think I in oh, the yeah. chat, and it was it was a video of that exact conversation of. <clears throat> a gentleman that was, you know, in, in Kentucky and is, it's a whole different side too. We're, we're not even talking about that yet. The whole legal side, which is about this equalness of actually trying to figure out how to distill. It's huge, right? Endeavor. But he was talking about how, you know, and you look at it and it's like, wow, he's got a really nice starter kit, if you will, of distilling. And, you know, that's not easy. It's a pretty expensive unit. But when you look at it, it's like, he's not just going in there. I'm like, well, I think I'm going to just mash some stuff up and make it. No, he worked, he went to school and he worked as an apprentice in some, you know, whiskey, whatever, distilling. He knows what he's doing. So it's not like you're just going in there and right. making it happen. You've got to have experience first before you start distilling. I mean, you can try and get lucky, I guess. Yeah. But I, I think again, that there's definitely the going to be people out there that just give it a go, right? Of course. I, I feel like there's going to be people that maybe their background is in different Humble. a different kind of <laughs> of biochemical engineering that's right well a different kind of mass production right so maybe they're a winemaker mm. maybe they're a beer brewer and they decide to you know get into distilling as well how does that 
like there's going to be some trial and error there, right? Like it's a different skill set. Oh, there's got to be. So I even would, if you're even if you're good at distilling gin or brandy, distilling for whiskey is a very different business, right? And then there's also the. Uh, <laughs> All right there, Sorry, buddy. we're sampling some whiskey here, and it's just a, a wee bit different. It's yeah. Different. <laughs> Taste tops. Mills gone bad. <laughs> I, I kind of like this one, honestly. All right. I'll, I think I'll tell get you some what. Time. Uh, we'll have a talk about it. Yeah, Absolutely. we're gonna review this bottle eventually. We decided to crack it open for the show. Tonight. Don't show them yet, quick. <laughs> too, late. too late now. <laughs> too late now. They're gonna, they're gonna anyway. back that up. All right. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm. I think that there's going to be like the people that start these craft distilleries are going to run the gambit, right? And sure. you're going to get some people that are extremely qualified and are very meticulous about what they do and they produce good, consistent product. And then you're going to get some like gunslingers, right? And you're going to get some artists too. I feel like that are very like, like almost like a mixologist, right? They're, sure. they're experimenting with things and they want to try new things to see just like what comes out of it. And it's more of a of a food product than it is a marketable thing, right? Yeah. And it'll be a one off stuff. Yeah. From from what I see is manufacturing as as an engineer or scientist, you give me the temperature cut points for the still, and I'll do that every time. But that's not creating whiskey. That is replicating whiskey. That is replication. And, and, and so that's that sure. is exactly what you do at these major distilleries. You cut here. You you heat it up to this temperature. You run it for this long, then you check for cut, then you cut, run, get the hard cut, dump the rest, or put it to your what secondary still, whatever you're going to do with it. But that's exactly how these companies work. But that initial craft decision, that artwork of making a good whiskey, is not going to be done by engineers. It's going to be done by artists. I and agree. That's, right. that's the tricky right. part. I think the other thing too is, it, it, but then can they replicate it? That's well, the tricky part. so I think we're going to, I think you're all right. I think we're going to see a, 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 a boost in people trying, right? It's going to yes. be massive. Yeah. But I think, and I, it kind of brings me back to the starlight when we went down there mm -hmm. and checked it out yep. and I wonderful product they're making down there, lots of stuff. And I know they're, ex, they're just not experimenting in that and, and but they've got some work ahead of them, but I think, to that point, I think that that's where you're going to find your bigger hitters, people that are already producing bourbon that have an idea right. that want to invest into the American single malt and getting into the barley versus the corn. And because and, they've already got a system, they already yeah. know the scale, they already have things that that are producing stuff, and they've got the experience with the barrels and different flavoring techniques, etc. And guess what? They have their own, which I think honestly is key if you get your own bourbon barrels. With your liquid in it, yeah. Then you know it's then you know base. it's gonna be awesome to put something else in there that's gonna have right. your uniqueness, kind of like your DNA in a sense, right? Yeah. So I think, I think that's where, like, you know, like imagine you know some of these other bourbon places producing some American single malts. I think it'd be a huge hit, and it'll go faster than anything that a craft distiller would do. Correct. Do you think that the the distilleries that are going to get more into the American single malts will end up being the ones that are more northernly that have more access to barley. Barley, uh, I, I would think. I mean, I don't know I what don't the know. cost is to ship like barley to Texas. I'm, I have absolutely you're, no idea. You're shipping a rail car, or either rail car or a trucker. But they've got to bring the barley down for the distilleries anyway, right? Because they they're using right. it in the mash. They're, they're no using what. 15 percent barley typically in a bourbon mash. So you're if, if single malt is a small portion you know that's what i know starlight has done when they had leftover barley they did single malts yeah but you know if you get an extra uh extra trailer of barley per year that you could do a lot so, of whiskey with a trailer so of the, barley the difference is probably going to be the distilleries that are doing it that it's not just a one-off thing that they're like oh we got some extra barley let's make a single malt that's versus correct. right somebody that's like we're making american single malt and, and then, this is how we're going to do our brand. And then yeah. I want a I want a trailer of barley from Michigan, uh, Upper Peninsula, and because they produce this certain protein content. You know, then you get right. a person that That's is a lot of different... looking specifically at a type of barley. Yeah. Then they need to get it malted, and then they need to get it done. You know, That's so craft. So so you so you're <laughs> looking at, at the, <laughs> yes, malt, the kind of or is it just bur it's just whiskey? I mean. Arguably, looking for good malting malting floors. That's gonna be a that could be a trick, and I don't know how much of that is around, 
So but, that's where we get into the business, right? Yep. Get your shovel shoulders ready, right, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be but isn't it isn't it safe to say though that I mean most uh, southern states are going to have to import their barley? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I, I I looked up Virginia Distillery. They actually work are working with a um, a selected breed of barley that grows in Virginia. Really, but, but Virginia, they also have some north, some higher elevations yeah, that maybe you can true. give them to them. So they are they are running with some fairly local barley. But in general, you're talking Michigan, Minnesota, Wyoming, you know, North Dakota. Um, that that region is really better suited for growing barley. Mm-hmm. Now there's a lot of land up there, so you can grow a lot of barley up there without. That's the why end I would be planting my distilleries yeah. up in those areas. Well, I mean, shipping. You yeah. ship your booze. But then you gotta ship your booze. Yeah. Ooh, no, 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 no one lives there. there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nobody Damn. lives up there to buy your buy your liquor and shipping. Population's kind of small. Boys, we got a uh, super chat here. I'm gonna call it real quick from Eric <laughs> Wait. Wowzer. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, appreciate Eric. that. Cheers, really buddy. Appreciate it. Good Cheers, sir. brother. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ditch this uh mm-hmm. say yes, I'm and go go to a scotch. I could do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that with me. This, this could be a good opportunity for Dr. Scott. Oh, wow, they're going to get, get some Ugh, stats no. on. Uh, I don't know. Are we ready for that? Whiskey too. Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah, we'll do that. Some of this go, go see if I can find Dr. Scott. All right. That gives us a break. I think I actually have a quick intro. They call me Dr. The doctor is in. You're talking about craft distilling. We have is been. We are. This is a, actually a really good topic for you, Dr. Scott. How's that? Because you got that garage still that you won't tell That's anybody about, right? <laughs> so there are rules Andrew about that. Andrew shaved too. He did. Isn't that weird? So so it's funny. There's, um, you know, you can brew beer in your garage. You can own a still. But if you put any of that beer in that still, it is a federal offense. So I do not recommend anybody home distilling. So I'm opposed can, to that. Can I ask a question about that? Because sure. I'm sure it's some sort of uh, ridiculous from the dram can. Uh, post-prohibition law. It is right. Oh, they want they want to tax you, but That's they don't care about taxing the beer. No. No. Do they think that people are going to distill so much booze in their house that it's going to take away that much money? I mean, it takes back to like the whiskey rebellion, right? Like, like George Washington era stuff. Yep. It's, it's all ridiculous. about, it's all about tax money. It's really not about um, crime per se. It's about um, getting the tax money off it. So, so talk to us, doc. Ridiculous. All right. So craft distilling. You know, you think craft distillers, you're thinking small companies, you're thinking all that kind of stuff. Well, family owned, family owned. That's not always the case. It is, it is in the number of craft distilleries in the U S it is predominantly small distillers. Um, Mostly like four guys that just decided to open one. Is that what we're correct? I think the the money. So I I see you have some papers here that actually have some of the stats. Um, I like where you're going with that though. The craft (laughs) spirits market volume reached over 13 million cases in 2021 so this tw- the, the the stats here they have here really ended the data collected ended in august of 22 so when they say 21 that's kind of what they're talking could, about could you give me something to compare that to so i can put some perspective in so like how many cases did glenn morangy well okay so let, let me let me go I, I there's some information on here let me let me get directly to that there are about twenty five thousand people <laughs> in the u.s employed in craft distilleries Twenty five thousand. Okay. 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 There are about 10,000 in all of Scotland doing distilling. One, one more time. 25,000 in craft distilleries in the U.S. There's about 10,000 in all of Scotland doing distilling. It tells me that they got their shit down in Scotland. Yeah, that, they know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> well, that- so there's about $7 billion in craft distillery sales in the U.S., and about four billion dollars in Scotch sales per year. What wow. was the first number? Seven billion. In- yes. So the craft distilling business in the U.S. is essentially twice as big as worldwide Scotch sales. Get the f- no way. Front. Shut that. So this craft distilling is not a small business. 
I don't. I, I can't. Isn't that wait a minute. That doesn't that. make sense to me. There's tw- there's like 2,600 craft distillers in the U.S. alone. How Have fast you been doing is it your growing? continuing you education? About, about 10% a year. Dear Lord. It is growing astronomically. Well, I no, I I believe that, but those numbers are like I you know, that's the thing it I had seems I, super inflated. I had to check that because okay, so 2600 <laughs> distilleries, you know, there's and, and okay, so this is the thing. It is it is spread throughout the country. Now there are five states that have um 30% of the craft distillers. Texas, maybe. <laughs> pick pick five states do you think would be the the top five states that have craft distillers new york yes texas california yes texas yes um california Timer. uh those you got those um texas new york california virginia michigan no um wisconsin nope mm. indiana tech uh california Oregon. new york texas Pennsylvania and Washington. 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 Now the next five are wash that. Yeah. Really? Pennsylvania has 156 craft distillers. But there's a lot of breweries, I guess, in Pennsylvania. Correct. So the next five are um let's see Colorado, Michigan, North Carolina, Oregon, and Florida. Florida? So, <laughs> so those 10 states <laughs> account for over 50% of the craft distilleries in the nation. Okay. And so the other 30 states. I have, noticed that Kentucky wasn't on there. Correct. Mm. Or Tennessee. Not craft. Mm. Correct. Not a craft. Distiller. Interesting. So Martin's yep. got a question, though. Yep. He says, uh, isn't scotch by volume more than all the other whiskeys combined? No. What? No, it's not, no. not, even, not even compared no. to craft whiskeys. No. Cra- no. Craft distilleries. So craft distilleries. be careful. Craft distillery includes gin, vodka, brandies, anything else that distilled. Vod- you know, all the vodkas. Mm. So, okay. So, all right. So that's not fair. It, 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 it kind of is a, a little bit wider filter, if you will. Fair point. But that is all the dist- distilled. Well, I guess it is whiskey in Scotland. So that is a little bit of a different different story. But like uh, Eric Waite said, Scotland only has 141. That's right. Right. Which the, the, that includes all it's small. It's, so a it's, small grain, yeah, it's a much small single malt. It's a small market. Yeah. The U.S. with We're 330 million people, they can consume we got a lot. their spirits. We so got lots of peeps. Big difference. Mario so, Van uh, Peeps. So the number of craft distilleries <laughs> in the U.S. grew by 17% last year in one year. <laughs> That's a lot. The number of craft distilleries okay. grew by 17%. The U.S. craft spirits market uh, reached over 13 million nine-liter cases. So that's what, 12 bottles? Yeah, that's it's 12, 12, yeah. 12, 12 750 mils. Yeah, uh, with 7.5 billion in sales. So- that is That's a lot. Almost We're missing twice the boat, boys. The entire whiskey. What we need to do? What do we need get to get in there? Um, all right. Yeah. Em- employment is at twenty four thousand. Up a lot, but not quite to the pre pandemic levels. They were like twenty nine thousand in two thousand nineteen. So is that um, is that distillery employees, or does that count like tour guides and it stuff like it, that? Well, those are distillery employees. Okay. And same same numbers. Yeah. Same numbers as Scotland. Fertilizer spreaders, um, you know. In 2019, there were about 10,000 employed by this full-time employees in distilleries in Scotland. These um, that 24,000 is full-time in domestic employees. Okay. So, so whatever they're doing, really they're comparable working for the distillery. Two and a half times in both volume and number of employees. So it's really interesting. Okay. So craft distillers, how small, how small do you need to be to be a craft distiller? That's a great question. Uh, is this like by volume by of volume. like number by of cases. volume by give me a number of cases uh i would say under half a million cases i was gonna say under a million i don't even have a guess that you said one dollar the $1. Large <laughs> cra- largest craft distillery by by law so this is a, a rules by the american craft spirits association um you have to be under seven hundred and fifty thousand gallons removed from bond annually which works out to three hundred and ninety four thousand cases. Yeah. Okay. So okay. if you're if you're, you're above three hundred ninety four thousand cases, That's then you're not million. a craft distillery. Um, a medium size is between me, between fifty two thousand and five thousand cases, and a small craft distiller is under five thousand cases a year, which is really pretty small. It's really small. Yeah. 
Um, that really is like out of your garage. So if stuff, you can, right? if you can pull up that kind of, the yeah. PowerPoint and go to slide seventeen, I want to show an interesting. Oh, oh so you're asking me to do some work. Oh, oh my goodness! Go to PowerPoint. PowerPoint. We need to go to the PowerPoint. Is that in here? Let's that do one. Go to slide seventeen. Oh my gosh! You're asking 17. me to share slides. <laughs> These are not my slides. These are produced uh, by the Cra American. I don't even know where the numbers are. That's, that's Cra ten. Craft Spirits. Uh, oh boy. Uh, data. Right here, like, this guy, guy, all right, here, let it. me share. Let me do this. <laughs> yes, so this is, this is a really interesting topic because there's so much information here, and um, people are, and even the, the American Craft Spirit Association is doing a lot of work here. Okay, so we talked about large producers, medium producers, and small producers. Okay, large producers produce 55.9 percent of the volume, but are 1.7 percent of the number of distillers. So those okay. big distillers Jesus. are doing a huge out. amount. I mean, that's the Tito's. Right. That's your Balcones. That's your Iron Root. Those are these big craft distillers. So, uh, you know, when you look at, at the uh, produce, some of the, wow. some of the, what you consider large craft producers, Diageo has craft distilleries in their portfolio. Sure. William Grant has craft distilleries in their portfolio. So they're, Small, big, so that 55. Well, it's, a, it's a small distillery owned by a larger company, correct? So, but with the you so so 90 percent almost 90 percent of the uh small producers produce less than 5,000 cases a year. Wow, so that's a big number. And so, go, what I'm looking at is it's really hard to make the jump from a uh, small yeah. producer up into even the medium size, correct? Right? Like. I, I was having a conversation with somebody about um, franchises the other day, mm -hmm. and they said that I think it was like two or three percent of franchises that start franchising make it to a hundred locations. It's like a super super small number. So it's like getting and, into the NFL. Well, be, be, yeah. Right. I mean, well, because it's really like, hard to make that scale jump, and it it's is, probably right. the same thing with right. this. Like just by getting the equipment. And the marketing and everything to go your way, and finding a financing a, well, and, right and, place, and right finding time. Finding your um, your market share, right? Like, because there's only so much room on the shelf at the liquor That's store. That's true. That's true. So being able to sell your product, yes. whereas a lot of the small distillers are probably selling out of their distillery. Well, so yes, exactly. That's exactly right. The the smaller distillers are predominantly making money in their um, their tasting rooms and selling after the fact. So th this slide is really interesting. So if you look at the different distillers, if you look at the characteristics, smaller and medium are typically negative cash flow. We, makes sense. They're losing money. Yeah. Yep. So that sucks. It does. It does. Because but... the small craft distiller, the really small ones, they do their tasting room and maybe a few local grocery stores. That's about all they can get. You can't get the selling out of their freaking in trunk. So medium sized distillers, they're starting to become regional but you're still investing to grow. You're buying that big so still. You're, you're basically you're putting into barrels. You're doing all that kind of work. Well, so you have to lay it down for three, five, seven <clears throat> years to correct. get ready. And you're still at most regionally distributed. Right. So when you get to the large craft distillers, they are typically about 50% regional and 50% national distribution because they can, they can sell it, you they know, can, yeah, Tito's have... vodka, uh, Balcones. They're, they're a much larger region they're, they're getting a brand recognition nationally and so they're selling and so they're the only reason they're negative they would be negative cash flow is that they're still trying to invest to, to build essentially build capacity but at that point they've got enough people that recognize that the brand can make money that they can raise capital if they want and to, diageo and, will come in and so basically i was just i was just gonna say you're the whole it's like a game you're trying to, to balcones yourself to the point where you're good enough here locally, you, people like you, you spread out, you become a little bit more national. And somebody says, yeah, I like you guys. Let me put you in my, my wings and my take portfolio. you on. That's Let me exactly put you out there. Right. Yeah. That's what, that, that's and the craft. That, that's the key. And yeah. then once Balcones has that um, corporate backing, now the Christ per or the price per bushel of grain goes down. Well, because your bottles, your marketing, all, all, all that stuff. Right. Yeah, because well, yeah, you get your juggernaut, so, you so, can dictate. Uh, so that's yeah. how they that's how they make their. But benefit. to bring yeah. us back full circle, and you also lose some of that craft creativity because you answer to corporate, and, and that know. that is going to be a very difficult discussion that they have to give up. Is does Diageo want to lose Balcones' key? 
because you you better hope not. I mean, that's what got them there. That's that's what that is exactly the flavor, the the profile, the marketing, the the the, the style of Balcones is what made them grow to right. that big of a of sure. distillery. So if you can get them the same grain cheaper because you're buying it also for whatever other distillery, great. That would be a huge benefit for Balcones. But if you're going, going to come in and say, well, Balcones, now you need to use our, we have a, um, a, a one, two, we, three. Well, we, and we have a distiller that or a blender that is coming up through the ranks and they need to spend some time in your, and they're, so they're going to take over your, your distillery to, to build their cred so they can then go on to Johnny Walker or something. Well, then you're, yeah. Then you're ruining the brand. Yeah. So what so, I'm hearing is owning a distillery is like owning a boat. The best two days are when you buy it and when you sell it. Amen. <laughs> well, if you see those small and medium ones are essentially losing their negative cash yeah, flow. I did notice that. So yeah. <laughs> it, it, it does make tough. you wonder, like if you if obviously Balconis is kind of the recent re recent purchase into that world, it makes you wonder, like, what are those guys? Are they still doing it, or like, are they still producing everything, or do they like? hand the keys over and then yeah i i would think my gut is that they're still doing it they're just helping them produce it faster and getting out to more stores well and see that's where the the craft distilling function is really a a a marriage between art and science you need the art to create good good distillate right you need science to do it re repeatedly and do it cheap <clears throat> And if you can find that balance, you're not negative cash flow. And that's the key. Well, but I as we're tough. talking about this, and one of the examples, and maybe this isn't really as good an example, but you know, monkey shoulder we talked about, I think it was last week. Mm -hmm. They they've had to change their recipe. Yep. They're too Why? big. They got well, too big. They got too big. That's they, a good, they, yep. they grew up and they can't source the whiskey that they put in their blend. Yep. You're right, Ben. I, I think that's exactly it. It's all about I hope not. Yeah. It's all about using the juggernaut market. Marketing is everything. Yep. Well, and yeah, it gives them access to different markets because now the Diageo rep in New Jersey can bring in Balcones as well. Well, it's but. they're buying these brands for the same reason the McDonald's goes out and buys the next little concept that's up and coming, right? Like McDonald's wants, they, they like the basics of that. They're going to give that concept a little bit of money and a little bit of support and let them grow in a in a good way and give them structure and and you know things that they need to to make sure that they continue to be profitable and that makes the company money yeah i'm gonna like interfere with that part of it yeah it, it might not be a, a a true comparison but in corporate america it happens time and time and time again a company buys another company because that company has got this awesome technology or process and they have finally mm -hmm. grown up big enough to get the attention of the big dogs. And as soon as the big dog buys them, what do they do? They, it's a Borg. Microsoft has done it thousands of times across yep. the board. Yep. They have bought companies. IBM does it all the time. They buy these awesome new technologies. And as soon as it gets under the wing, they try to turn it into Microsoft. They try to turn it and, they literally just blew the billions of dollars they they spent to buy that technology because they threw it out the window because they wanted to put their well tw twitter bought vine and shut it down right and now so tiktok is too. tiktok is the biggest I don't market see in the next that happening in the in in the, the liquor market i don't see diageo buying balcones no. to shut it down Th that's not their, well, that's not their correct, methodology but yeah. i i feel like it's the distilling in the brewing world is a little bit different because it's an art form right like you've got a style that you've created and that's the market for it. And there's no reason to bring it in and make it into something else that Diageo already has in the portfolio. I agree. They're buying this agree. to expand their reach. Yeah. Right. If, if Diageo or if Balcones can get barrels for $10 a barrel cheaper because Diageo is buying in bulk, that be, but be, Balcones is getting the same barrels. Great. Right. Getting the same grains, get, using the same distillers, all those kind of things. And that's a, that could be a huge benefit. But the the downside of some of that stuff is, you know, if McDonald's came in and bought my restaurant, they could get me beef a lot cheaper than I pay for it. It's but not, it's not, not your beef. It's not your <laughs> beef. Well, and, and so there's the that key. too, is right? Like, barrels, like, is it, is it, is it apples to apples? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so I, I think that there's definitely some stuff that that probably does change, you know. Probably. But if as long as it's in a subtle way and they still <laughs> keep the the heart of the product, yeah. I think it's fine. 
That's fair. So we've got something going on in the uh, ticker on the bottom. If you haven't noticed, uh, pay attention to that. But we need to wrap up this the craft oh, yeah. distilling conversation. Okay. So, Doc, it uh, we love seeing you. Oh, I think that's, that's all I got. That's all the stats. Those, those are some crazy here, stats so. you brought tonight, Doctor yep. Scott. Crazy. Are you? Ready I would like you start? to grow the beard out so I can tell you apart from Andrew. Sometimes yeah, I can, I get, it doesn't make tricky, sense. So we'll see what um, I can do. You know, you guys are like twins. To the point that you have the same audio. I keep hearing beeping. Yeah, it's pretty weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's crazy, right. crazy, crazy. Thanks, Dr. Scotch. Right, see you guys. Thanks, Dr. Scotch. Yeah, right, glasses like a little, would be good a little, yeah. <laughs> Dr. There Scott was amazing. Yeah. Oh, hey, Andrew, oh, you're hey, back. Andrew. Oh, you just missed you just Dr. Doc Scott. was here. It was great. It's so weird. <laughs> Dude has some serious number crunching. It's like we've never been in the same room at the same time. I know. Uh, did you know he guys, shaved his beard? Did he, he did, too. Uh, He's got numbers, man. He's got numbers and info. Well, let me look better with beard. You well, know. let's see. Maybe next time. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so we've got a, a, a Wii giveaway going on. Do you want to talk to that, Drew? Yeah, doing? actually, I'm gonna let Sean talk about it because he, he's uh, one of brought, oh, he's brought it. I, it. I had a uh, a donation by a um, a whiskey rep to our cause. So nice. um, so yeah, so I uh, I thought I would share with with everybody. So we've got a Highland Park uh, sweatshirt and a Highland Park like leather bound whiskey journal. That, uh, Do you have it to show off? Uh, I can. I'm I'm multitasking. Yes. Drew's, Drew's working. I'll do it. No, no. Drew's got he's, he's it. Got Drew's got it. it. Oh, Drew's got it. He's got it. And if you only had yeah, a few more arms, you want know, to pull it out of the bag so everybody can see. But it's it's actually a really nice uh, sweatshirt. So it's a jumper. It's a it's an extra large. So uh, not so, to worry about it being like a small or something and not fitting anybody. Hmm. Uh, but it is, man. Oh, it's Why don't you use up. that dram cam over there it's for that? It's really nice. It's a zip up hoodie. Yeah, use a dram cam for the. Oh, that is cool. The leather bound thing. Look at the front and back of that. Yeah. Dram so cam in effect. It's a. Uh, there we go. Highland Ooh, Park. Look at the nice. Show the very back nice. of notebook. Got all the. That is the really Highland Park cool. Viking stuff on there. So it's actually really nice. Um, and it's just a blank, like, journal, journal basically. Guide. And then we've got the. Uh, so it's got all the the Orkney flag and uh, the Orkney, Highland Park. Orkney single malt on this and the sleeve. Oh, I know. I wonder if it looks better over here, Mark. There you go. It's really nice. You can see it there better. So I I got it donated to us. So I figured it would be a can fun I put, thing to just Can I put uh, what, hashtag S4D to win it myself? That's right. S4D. Yep. Knock yourself if out. you were wondering, it was made with Viking soul since 1798. Oh, that is cool. No, Actually, really it looks cool really nice. Away. I, yeah, I kind of want it. Honestly. So yeah. I'm thinking that that may get lost between here and the mailbox. Uh, <laughs> it, it is pretty nice. So nice, nice uh, sure anyway, but it's it, it's cool. Like let's start this year off with a with a bang, right? Yeah, that's really cool. So if yeah, so Eric, if you are two XL, this is probably not going to fit unless you, you just don't zip it up. You have to get on the Peloton. Man. Make it work, yeah. man. X, Make it XL. Um, so you got some catching news tonight? Yeah, we do. Oh yeah. There was one one thing that was really worthy of talking. So, and it kind of ties into a previous um, Scotch in the news discussion we had about um, Italy going to be changing the regulations on their warnings on their uh, whiskey and and Ireland getting pissed off over it. Um, We got the same thing going on in Scotland, and I wasn't aware of it, but I guess that the Scottish government has now proposed. Um, some new legislation that's going to prevent uh, advertising um, and marketing, kind of like we have here in the states. Remember, I mean, back when we oh, were kids, I heard kids about this with like Lagavulin and yeah. book or something. Back when we were kids right. on TV, there were people chief and cigarettes left and right. Oh, and <laughs> all just, all the was just, um, so that's for Scotland sure. is basically coming around and they're like. Yeah, we're going to ban uh, alcohol advertising on television, outdoor billboards, um, sports and uh, event sponsorships. And wow. event sponsorships? Yeah. I mean, so, you know, you go to a, a soccer game, a rugby game, uh, and you you can't have advertising for scotch for in beer, Scotland. Or you know, all the beers and beer, beer so sponsors? It, it, it's pretty big. Um, so this is a very interesting uh, article that that was just explaining what that really means. How did you even find this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't go to too much depth. I, I try to keep a Google search to the front page because, I mean, really, if it's not making the front page, 
is what we're talking. But um, there's a, the other article is basically a response from someone in the industry saying, Hey, yo, don't, 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 yeah, you can't make general statements in your legislation um, when it comes to scotch because we're, we're different. We're different than just alcohol in general. And um, it, I, I enjoyed reading the response more than I did a, the article about the legislation. Um, cause this guy, John Lamont, and I, maybe I should know who he is. Um, I'm sorry. I don't, but is that it, the Jurassic park guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Clever girl. Right? Clever girl. Um, I thought he had an ascot on for a minute. Oh, I was super nah, excited. Man. Like, oh, yeah, dude, that's dude John. He's, I think his name was John too, actually. Yeah. But he's, he's really saying, look, you, you can't make this statement that, um, Without branding and other marketing strategies, alcohol products and beverage. Scroll up, you missed it. He the, the, the legislation is saying alcohol products in each beverage subsector are essentially variations of the same thing. And he's got a beef with that he, saying, yeah. don't don't lump us in with every other alcoholic product. And this is why. Um, so he he makes some interesting points, but Huh. To me, the overall discussion about the legislation in and of itself was most important and probably most newsworthy. That's why I wanted to at least bring it up. I, it so seems, that, you're right. That doesn't differentiate between beer, wine, no, whiskey, anything. It, it's so a, a general. I mean, and let's let's be realistic. That's how laws are written anymore, right? Let's yeah. be as general as we can. Throw a big enough net, and we'll catch as much crap as we can. Um, but in this industry, in that country with knowing what scotch means to this to the scottish economy that's is, harsh man what, what what are they really doing are, are they really shooting themselves in the foot with such legislation mm. i don't know i i really honestly let's get time for a dram on here and roy let's get some some folks that like have that actually you know scottish uh interest and irons in the fire and, and see how they feel about it um because it affects their livelihood a little bit more i'm just curious but that was really the there was some other you know typical garbage news to talk about that you know wasn't worthy of bringing i wanted to at least point this out to get some people's comments and see what they think about especially those of us that are old enough to see how it's affected us in the states i mean now we weren't drinking back in the 80s but we saw tons Sean of was. alcohol <laughs> commercials I mean. I, I mean you know watching <laughs> football on sunday or or yeah. I, so we yeah, know that, that that's happens. interesting because it in the U.S. you can advertise beer all day long, but you whiskey, sure? no, Negative. no, even wine. Can you do wine? I don't know. Yeah, do wine. yeah, that's wine. Not very often, but this this is everything. So there's no beer or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just what do they say? Throwing throwing no up. rhyme or reason. Baby with the bathwater. Yeah. Bath right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, question is beer better for you than whiskey? Yeah, I mean, whiskey's just taking it to the next level. It's a little cleaner. I I would argue that beer has more money to spend than whiskey, than a lot of whiskey distillers. Like oh, Budweiser sure. just throws it around, right? Oh my God, do uh, they ever? You know, I, yeah, they do. But their their economy of scale is so big. If you don't advertise that stuff, like, how do I figure out which cigarette to smoke if it's not advertised to me? That's true. I smoke them all. And I, guess, it, it, I find one I like. And. It, that that industry is a whole nother conversation and there's so many things on that industry that it blows my mind i can't believe that they literally have to pay to advertise against their own that's nuts you know that's yeah, so I, nuts you that the government forces them to yep. shoot themselves in the foot by law and uh but whatever and, and it's still and they're still so selling they're, they're still they selling, selling man. Man. Oh, man. it's worth it i guess <laughs> oh, boys we got uh 22 entries out of 44 watching on, right guys. now Man. so Andrew if you Jones haven't we're gonna give you another minute our uh, most important to enter baggage pound s4d journey. in the chat and you will be entered for this raffle and then we're gonna end the show so hurry up i like it yeah if you guys don't want it i'll use it i, I use these notebooks all the time those are nice for work Dude, it's it's a really nice notebook. Yeah, it is. It's it's pretty sweet. Like I honestly, if it'll I'll make wear that hoodie too. I, I, I wish you guys could feel the quality. It's, it's if nice. you would like us to improve the value of this, we can all sign it on the internet. <laughs> and it it's not worth anything. Does that yeah, improve the value? I don't know if that <laughs> it's worth. We'll pour some whiskey on it. That's probably better. <laughs> yes. Smell this. Splash some lager. Here's some lager. Oh, we got we got to uh, put some high, Highland Park in there. <laughs> Look at Bob H. He's like, of course we were drinking in the A's. We walked around the neighborhood with a six pack and a belt of firecrackers hanging out of our. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's probably what he's doing at Jersey Boy. 
<laughs> All right, let's run this award and see who the lucky winner is. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Do it. Look at the names. Look at the names. And it could be Nicky. 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 Wow, nice. that was a psych. I thought somebody else wanted for a hot like Welcome to, to a that. winner's club so, there, buddy. Nick, if we don't have your address, you need to email us at scotchfordummies at gmail.com, your mailing address. And I think Andrew can get this one to you easy. There's a, yeah, because there's no, that's not illegal. The, owl, the, the, the owls yeah. can take a break on this one. Yeah, yeah we, we can, can do we that can totally too. Put that in a box. USPS. Wow, the Get United you. States Postal Service. Well, congratulations. Can yeah, cool. I hope you enjoy nice it. Gift. It's a good nice way to gift. start the year. Yep. Nice so, gift. guys, the, the, to, to wrap up tonight's show, we talked about craft distilleries because of the, it's what it means to American single malts, kind mm -hmm. of pretty much. Yeah, and I think so. we talked about last week where that's where we're going. So, we're slowly but surely building up reviews on a few American single malts are coming. We kind of. Yep. Yep. Got into a few it's a new now. journey for us. It really is. I'm, yep. I'm actually kind of excited about it because it's it's new territory, right? And Learning about a, everybody else. And see, that's oh, the thing. West. So, yeah. you know, you look at craft distilleries are growing at 12 to 15% per year. Those are all the other distilled spirits. American single malt is a very small portion Sumo of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that has the potential to really <clears throat> show up what, what whiskey could, what American whiskey can do. Agreed. I yeah. like that. Yeah. So, so it'll be good. Yeah. Good topic. It was fun talking about it. And uh, it was good to see Dr. Scotch. And I think we had a good, as far as technology show go, thank it, God. It worked really well. Things worked well on that. Camera switches. Yeah. Everything was cool. <laughs> Hopefully the audio was good. No one said they couldn't hear us. That's yeah. true. Big, uh, big That's thumbs true. up well, to our camera 40. guys. They're yeah. killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, guys. You guys rock <laughs> Thanks, guys. Guys. Rock. Camera, camera one, camera two. Hey, awesome. share them like this because we need to pay those, those camera guys. That's right. Uh, <laughs> they're expensive. Hey, guys, fun topic tonight. I learned a lot. I can't wait to get into American Single Malt with you. And we'll see you guys next week. Yep. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers guys. Three, two, one. Here we go.